how to climb a sycamore tree. Are you bringing something of this world into your new life in Christ? Okay, there's a few things you need to know about Jericho specifically. It has this natural spring that makes it like an oasis. And it had, um, of course, the Jordan River running near it. Mm -hmm. And it was a terrific place for trade and communications. It was connected to all different kinds of highways and Roman roads. And, and especially one that came in from the east, you know, silks and frankincense and myrrh and all that lovely stuff. And it was also a very popular tra a route to take up to Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, the priests used to stay there, and they treated it like a like a like a resort, you mm -hmm. know. And when it was time for them to serve in Jerusalem, they'd walk up to Jerusalem right there from Jericho. And then it was just it was just a beautiful place, just because of its springs, and it also had like natural fortifications because of the mountains around it and the river and the lake behind it and everything. <coughs> and um, okay, so. Let's think about when do you need to stop during a long car ride? To go to the mm. bathroom? To the bathroom? To Water. get something yes. to eat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To um, stretch. Gas. Gas. Stretch. Well, for, uh, when it comes to Jericho, Jericho was like a gas station except in a really fancy resort. And because, and their long trips were a whole lot longer than like mm -hmm. me and Rob down to Virginia. They had to plan their trips around where they were going to get water. And, and Jericho was a very important place for that. Okay, when is the best time to hit someone up for money? Hit someone up for money? What kind of question is that? When they have some money, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And when do you well, know we're in a good mood. That too. <laughs> and money. when are you in a good mood and you, you got some money? When you got paid. On payday. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so, when you could see, as Jesus was approaching the city, the um, King James speaks of, uses the word certain blind man. And there's a good reason for that. Is because Luke was actually talking to a Roman audience, they would not have known who this person was, so we didn't bother naming him. But in Mark, he is named. Okay. And, and he knew, also, that Jericho, being everybody's coming, like, from the east with silks and frankincense and stuff, and, you know, they're coming back from the payday, this is a great time to, you know, beg, and blind people had to beg for a living. Right. Back in those days. And what time does the tax man collect his taxes? Your payday. Payday. Even before you see your check. Before, yeah, he gets his first. <laughs> <laughs> he collects before you get paid. We don't even see him. He <laughs> just gets it. <laughs> and then <laughs> once a year, though, you also have to go through and pay more taxes. Pay more. They have Most to of the time, time you got to pay more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. And so what it is is um, Zacchaeus, uh, he, he was probably very common for them to say, ah, oh, man. It's that crooked little tax collector. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're coming back and you haven't even cashed in your your goods for money yet. And here he yeah, is here collecting he his taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and and tax collectors were notorious for ripping people off. Right. And as Pastor Al said, his name means pure one. So if you can just envision people and they are talking to him and say, Hello, pure one. Right, exactly. Yeah. Through clenched teeth, you know? Right. Zacchaeus he, means pure one? Yes, Zacchaeus oh. means pure one. Ask Al about it. And, if, and so being a Jew and a tax collector, he was considered a, a traitor mm -hmm. to his people. There are a few things you need to know about the thickest sycamores or sycamore tree, and I didn't misspell it. That's actually how it's meant to be spelled. Okay. S Y C O M O R E. And you'll only find that in the King James Bible. Okay. But the um, new King James, or I mean, sorry, the new international version actually does say sycamore fig. Oh, they do. Okay. It does say sycamore fig. It is spelled wrong, too, but mm -hmm. it, at least it mentions it's a sycamore fig. It's actually a fig tree. Oh, that was originally okay. from Egypt, as a matter of fact. 
The, they called it the land where the sycamore tree blooms. Mm -hmm. And it was the Egyptian tree of life. They made caskets out of it for their money, mummies. Okay. And it was brought to Israel from Egypt. It was not native to Israel at all. Mm -hmm. And it, it took place way early in, their, in history. And it was, it was once widespread in Israel. It isn't anymore. But there's a good reason for it. Because it requires this symbiotic wasp to reproduce sexually, to create seeds. Because that's what, what they wind up doing is they go, the, the, the pollination process is really complicated. So I'm just going to boil it down to there's a particular type of wasp that only existed in Egypt mm -hmm. that po pollinated them and created the crunchy little seeds. Okay. But in Israel, the only wasp they have is a non-pollinating egg-laying wasp. Okay. So unfortunately what would happen is they'll walk up and, hey, I remember this tree from Egypt. These are great. <laughs> Get a mouthful of wasps. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> that had to be a surprise. Oh yeah, now, now go ahead and take your Fig Newton and pop it open and take a look. And you'll see the crunchy little seeds inside, the little round things that kind of look like mustard seeds. Yeah. Yep. Mm. This was prized. They loved the crunchy little seeds inside, gave it a nutty flavor. The only way to make these figs edible in Israel was to slash the fruit to let out ethylene gas so it would speed up the ripening process before the wasps got a chance to mature, but then they didn't have any seeds at all. Mm -hmm. They were really substandard. Okay. And they were eaten mostly by the poor because they couldn't afford the more expensive fruits. And keep in, keep in mind though that the fruit actually grows, it's weird, it grows right on the trunk rather than out on the branches mm -hmm. like an apple tree. Mm -hmm. okay, that has so to make it difficult to climb. Actually it's a very easy tree to climb, surprisingly. That's interesting. Yeah, um, one, see one I have? Oh. leaves and mm -hmm. my grandmother had one. I used to climb it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> when I originally started this, uh, I started it because I was wondering, what's the significance of mentioning it's a sycamore tree? And I first looked up the sycamore with an A, and I found the one where the bark is rugged and breaks off in large chunks, and this is impossible to climb and take my word for it. I'll never do it again. It hurt. I oh, did you actually tried it? When I was a kid. Oh. <laughs> wow. So when I found out, when I put in Israel sycamore tree, the sycamore fig came up and it made a whole lot more sense. Okay. But when you, you here, here's the application though. The sycamore fig, or, fig originated from the land of captivity. When the Israelites tried to eat them in the promised land, of course they got the unpleasant surprise of getting a mouthful of wasps. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, did the gashing thing to speed up the, the ripening process. But well, you consider it takes extra work just to make them edible. And they're still substandard after that. But people prefer, of course, the crunchy, the one with the crunchy little si seeds inside. And just like our new life, it takes more work to make any habit, activity, or even addiction that is of this world seem even just palatable to us. And why? Because we've seen the light. People who are of this world are blinded to their circumstances created by their sins. And immediately Bartimaeus received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people who likely knew him. When they saw him, gave praise unto God. <clears throat> the notoriety of, the, of his healing because people actually knew him, I'm figuring probably contributed to, and or maybe led to even, the crowd that you find in Luke 19.3. Because he was, he was known, even though Luke's account just says a certain blind beggar, it's somebody that was known. Mm -hmm. That's why I think Luke thought it was important to mention it just before this. Anybody want to read the next one? And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press. 
Zacchaeus may have been thinking to himself, I don't know why, but I just gotta see this miracle worker. If he can help Bart, maybe he can help me. Keep in mind, you don't even need to know what you need for God to help you. You ever have those days, it's like, I don't even know what's the matter with me, Lord, I just know I need you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jen, would you like to read the next one? Okay. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Luke 19, 4. I can just envision the people standing there. I mean, the Bible doesn't say it, but I can just envision them standing there watching him and thinking to themselves, Zach uh, was going after the figs. Right. And he was so greedy that he's going after the poor people's food. So would you have to climb the sycamore tree to get the figs? Or are yeah, they all the way from the top to the bottom? No, they're up, the they're up near the foliage, but still on the trunk. So like maybe where the branches so, attach? Yeah, about around there. I mean, the, they would think that at first, you know. So yeah, then naughty. it would make sense to think that he was going after the fruit then. Right. Mm -hmm. It would make sense for him to think that. And the fig tree, um, when you look at it, is very knotted. So it would be very easy for him to get a foot. Mm. Oh, Do you have a they're picture knotted of one? and then they cut I them couldn't back. find a good picture of one. <clears throat> but right now we just got a good picture. So it's mm -hmm. knotty and it has good places to grab a you hole. Keep, they keep, you keep it cut back because it's like the leaves grow like right from the, mm -hmm. the, the branch mm -hmm. and the fruit is right there. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes, makes it knotty is because the fruit has come from all of this. Oh, as so, so as the leaves come off, it makes a knot and, and the fruit grows up higher. And the leaves, you know, they oh. might grow off a little bit, but they cut them back also. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow, that's so cool. I'm so glad we had you here. <laughs> so, even though everybody else standing around you is thinking, they're just going after the fruit, Zacchaeus was just trying to get high enough to see Jesus. That's the important thing. Right, he and must have been small. Yeah, in the huh? kids' song it says, We little man, so he must be a small man in stature. So, and he's also he small in the him. eyes of his countrymen, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe he right. was a small person. Right. Mm -hmm. small person. So keep in mind that when you start to make the effort to live your life for Christ, be ready for people who know you to start thinking, she's all religious now, she thinks she's better than us, all holier than thou, too good for us. You're going to get that garbage. That's because they think you're going after the fruit, the changed behavior. But you know you're just trying to get closer to God. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Zacchaeus was obviously a very unpopular guy, as indicated by verse 7. He probably didn't hold dinner parties, so Jesus' willingness to come to his house for dinner meant a lot to him. For that matter, we see that he received him joyfully in verse 6. Jesus even calls him by his name, Pure One, whereas anyone else would have said it through clenched teeth, unless they were calling him that crooked little tax collector. God understands and touches us right where it means the most to us. That's the deep. That's the best way to get deep into someone's heart. Oh, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Luke 19.8. Yeah, I'm going to throw in something here I don't have in the notes because I saw it after I had already printed up the notes, and I don't stray from the um the King James Version very often, but I love the way this is this is phrased. Which verse is this? Eight. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will I will pay 
fourfold the amount. And he says, here and now kind of captures the real thinking process that's in Zacchaeus. Now, originally, this is what I said, but, you know, it's, it, it also expounds on it. Why would Zacchaeus use the present tense words, give and restore, instead of the future tense words? You would expect him to say, I will give and I will restore. Anybody got any thoughts on that? I find it poignant that Zacchaeus used the words give and restore as the main verb. Because he was going to do it immediately. Like, like right then. Which, which would show a heartfelt change. Because he's changed his attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rather than using the word will as the main verb of the sentence, it puts more power into it when he's got the word give and restore as the main verbs of those sentences. And that's exactly what I was thinking. It reflects a heart attitude. And it's especially, con it, uh, and I believe it was a heart attitude change, especially considering that Jesus' reply was present tense. Today salvation has come to this house. Mm -hmm. For this is what it means to be a son of Abraham. And I, again, strayed from the King James, and I used the, the New American Bible, because I just love the way it says, this is what it means to be a son of Abraham. That's why we are all sons of Abraham. Okay, final page. Told you I wasn't going to hand it to you right away. I didn't want you to sneak ahead and see. Ah, <laughs> oh, sneaky. <laughs> Are you sneaky? Zacchaeus was sick of more. <laughs> sick of more money, fancy food, servants, sick of more fancy clothes, jewelry, fine furniture, you name it. He was sick of it. He was sick of all those things he thought would make him happy when what he really wanted was a restored relationship with his God and with his fellow countrymen. That's why he give and restore. You go, mommies. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. There is also, if you think about it, another <clears throat> fruit in the Bible that was gashed and hung on a tree. First oh. fruit of the resurrection, Jesus Christ. Gashed and hung on a tree. Always remember to keep your eyes on him. Remember that like Zacchaeus, you are just trying to get high enough to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. When you reach out to him, he will reach out to you as well, just like he reached out to Zacchaeus. I love the idea, though, of the, taking the tree from Egypt. They took those trees with them out of captivity into the land of promise and instead of letting them go. Right. This and they, they didn't get what they should have gotten off that tree back in Egypt because yeah. they should have left that tree where it belonged and exactly. moved away from it. Right. Especially since it was revered so much in Egypt. Listen, this is kind of a, um, a little worksheet to, to help you climb a sycamore tree. <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm in school or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a class. I know. <laughs> it is a lesson. <laughs> Are you going to be school. my summer vacation? <laughs> Teacher, I'm not taking a test. <laughs> no, there ain't going to be no test. If you want to test yourself, that's fine. That's what this fun little diagram is all about. You start at the root of your problem, and you honestly ask yourself, why did I start a particular habit, behavior, addiction? Why do I continue? Which will lead you over to the reasons why you're thinking about quitting, and you can even throw in others' legit, legitimate concerns because sometimes they're seeing something you're not. Then you, you move on to, uh, you got to honestly ask yourself what kickbacks you get from this behavior. Because right or wrong, everything we do is done for a reason. Mm -hmm. And we have to honestly ask ourselves, what is it really costing me? And if you get to this point and you think that the price you're paying is worth the kickback you're getting, it's either one of two things. Either it's not as much of a problem as you thought it was, or you're not being truly honest with yourself. Which will move you on, to, and, and if, and if you, you honestly believe that the cost is not worth the kickback you're getting, you move to the next step. You make a list of alternative behaviors. 
because when you cast out one demon, he comes back with seven. So you replace it with something godly. Remembering that you're looking at the um, those little fruits up there, the little gash fruits hanging from a tree. And, and I'd like you all to, I forgot to write this in there, you know, gee, keep your eyes on Christ, the first fruit of the resurrection. Because I, I forgot to write that in the top of there. So once you've made a list of alternative behaviors, you can swing over, look ahead, and see what benefits the new behaviors will give to you. And then you hang your little sycamore tree up someplace where it can keep reminding you anytime you feel weak, you go back and you say, this is the reason God is leading me to stop this. And this is what God is leading me to do instead. And this is the outcome that's gonna, that I'm going to have if I keep sticking to it. Ta-da. Mm -hmm.